The completion of the 2020 NBA season is going to look, sound, and feel unlike anything we've ever witnessed before. So in our 104th consecutive day without hoops, I'm showing you 10 insane storylines approaching the NBA's return five weeks from now. First, reigning Speaks champion Hattie marks his spot on the board this year with his second point. There's his reasoning for 2016 Curry being the greatest MVP ever. Top 5 commenters in Speaks get yearly awards. Appreciate the best Hoopstock community on YouTube. The two teams that make the finals this October will have the shortest offseason in NBA history, as a late conclusion of this season means a later start to next year's. For next season, the NBA is targeting a December 1st start date that extend its season into June and July of 2021, which is an empty slot in time amidst the sports world unless you're an MLB fan. Baseball just booked a 60-game return for July 24th, but this December through July time frame is going to allow the NBA to avoid overlapping a good amount of the NFL season, and instead of basketball competing with the most popular American sport for four months of the year, the NBA is now mostly going to be competing for attention with the NHL and the MLB. There's the argument that vacation time and less eyes on the sports world during the summer could impact the NBA's numbers, but the summer's never seen anything like the NBA in its most tense playoff battles. So if this schedule change is a permanent thing and the season from now on goes from December through July, I'm predicting this is going to draw big time ratings for the NBA in the next five years. We'll see after just a few trips up and down the floor how this near five month break will affect players. It's of course something no other player has experienced in history. Resumption in such a meaningful stretch of games is interestingly unprecedented. You can expect a lot of players struggling to adjust physically, based off the off-court habits some have inevitably established. However, the large portion of players will be in shape, some shockingly more than others. If you haven't seen Quarantine Joker yet, this man straight up looks like Chris Stapp's Porzingis. Nicola's reportedly lost 50 pounds in his time off, so you gotta give this guy some respect for putting in the work. This could make the Nuggets legitimate title contenders in a race for the championship I think will be wide open to win. Also transforming his frame using the time off to his advantage is Toronto's man in the middle Marc Gasol, and for a player that's never really found his prime form offensively north of the border, slimmer, not so big Spain has a chance to help the Raptors get back to the finals. If you hadn't heard, the Raptors just became the first team to arrive in Florida collectively. The league plans on putting on a play-in tournament for the teams competing for the playoffs in order to get their beloved Zion into the playoffs. In all seriousness, while getting Williamson his first postseason spot's been the argument behind the NBA implementing a tournament for the 8th seed, Adam Silver's actually been interested in creating an NBA tournament system for a while now. There have been reports about this dating back to early 2018. In fact, just back in November, Zach Lowe and Adrian Wojnarowski reported that the league was engaged in serious discussions regarding a reseeding of the four conference finalists, a 30-team in-season tournament, and a postseason play-in. But the play-in tournament we're about to see is what I'm maybe most hyped about. It's going to be the NBA's version of March Madness, only this insanity will take place in mid-August over just two days. We're about to experience basketball in its purest form without the heckling, attention, and loudness of the crowd having an impact on the player's performance. It'll be a pressure-free zone, one in which, unless the NBA goes through with playing 2K sound effects as reported, we'll get to hear every bit of communication between the coaches and players, and of course the on-court jabber as well. So I hope Silver rejects the sound effects idea and keeps it as authentic as possible, because action with an absence of the crowd's gonna allow us fans to distinctly see who the most effective leaders on the floor are. But overall, let's embrace this new environment, not try to carbon copy the one we had. We could get to hear some serious trash talking loud and clear, given a likely echo in an empty building. I know the NBA probably doesn't want that, but us fans do. Based off football's instilled culture in the US, I wouldn't disagree with the argument that the NBA can never receive the ratings that the NFL does, and even with the playoffs in full swing this fall, the behemoth that is the NFL season opening could draw eyes away from basketball. However, without football for the time being, and for maybe such a long period of time, I believe the NBA is going to capture the hearts of a lot of desperate sports fans in the US. I mentioned before, summer sports has never seen anything like the brilliant and beautiful product that is NBA basketball, and I'll say it again. 
so players won't be able to leave the NBA bubble, which could cause them to go stir-crazy. That could especially be the case for teams that go deep into the playoffs. According to The Athletic, the restrictions of the quarantine situation are a major issue for many players, as they'll be isolated from their families for weeks. If you also hadn't heard, each team's hotels are going to be based off seating, and this could mean some either playful or heated interactions as rivalries develop on the court in the playoffs. But whatever drama comes from this, there better be someone filming it all. It'd be an incredible documentary. Despite all this optimism, cases of the virus are surging in Florida, and the NBA says it only has one option for a location to return. I know there's been concern, but the real reason you'll see the league return in just over a month is because the NBA scheduled their return this late for a reason. By the time we get to July 31st, the case numbers may not even be an issue. But in order to try and keep the players healthy and happy, the league's trying to make things as normal as possible inside the bubble. That means there's going to be everything from barbers and manicurists to a lounge for video games to DJ sets and movie screenings. There's also going to be numerous options for outdoor activities, including golf and swimming. Players will also be allowed to attend other games on their off days. So who knows, maybe the tight-knit NBA family will seamlessly keep itself sane here. Because, first of all, going to other games is a sick amenity, and having a wide range of indoor-slash-outdoor activities to keep their minds right could also keep these players around their mental peak. It's gonna be tough though, of course. The Black Lives Matter movement has become more important for some players than their profession, as Kyrie Irving, Dwight Howard, Lou Williams, and Avery Bradley have been leading voices among a fairly good amount of players who are against basketball returning. Woj dubbed Irving as the disruptor in a recent article, while the man Kyrie has some reasoning to be upset, of course that's blatant. The very corporations in America he's been ranting about He's been making millions off for nearly a decade. Not to mention, Irving's also out for the season with an injury, so all around, I just think he's a tad bit out of line with his in-depth standpoint on why the league should be canceled. Also, here's why the reasoning that resuming the season does more harm than good is a myth. Everything from post-game interviews to messages they can say on a mic before play begins, plus the money they're getting from playing, players will have 10 times more of a larger platform over just sitting at home and not playing. Health experts have stated that people age 65 and older are most vulnerable to COVID-19, and the NBA has three head coaches in that category, the San Antonio Spurs' Greg Popovich, who's 71, the Houston Rockets' Mike D'Antoni, who's 69, and the New Orleans Pelicans' Alvin Gentry, he's 65. Kamish initially said in an interview with TNT on Thursday, coaches may have to maintain social distancing protocols, and maybe they can be in the front of a locker room with a whiteboard, but when it comes to actual play, we're not going to want them that close to the players in order to protect them. Gentry promptly told ESPN regarding Silver's comments, that doesn't make any sense. How can I coach that way? Then Mavs head coach Rick Carlisle told ESPN that he called up Silver about his statements, and Adam admitted he'd jumped the gun with his TNT statement, going on to say it's entirely possible that an NBA coach in his 60s or 70s could be healthier than someone in their 30s or 40s. So like the reports nationwide regarding the virus in the mainstream, the commissioner's take on the dangers of this pandemic are extremely inconsistent. I'll predict the winner of the MVP after stating each one's case, stick around for that. So before the suspension, we were in the midst of one of the most heated MVP races of all time, and for the first time since I can remember this late in a season, the trophy didn't have a clear favorite, because in the nine game stretch of dominance that played out after the All-Star break for LeBron James, where he carried the Lakers to five wins over plus 500 teams, with beastly wins over the Celtics, who have the fourth best record in the league, the Clippers with the third best, and the Bucks, who have 53 wins. He beat that Milwaukee team by double digits, dropping 37 points and eight assists in that deer hunting, not to mention a game before Braun beat Team Giannis in the All-Star game. 
He had a 32-point triple-double to edge out a victory against the Nuggets, who are 5th in league-wide standings. You're probably wondering, why haven't I brought up Giannis yet? And that's simply because I'm displaying what it's taken for LBJ to get back in this race. If this was F1 racing, Giannis would have had a 6 plus second lead on LeBron. And it's not that Giannis pace dropped off or that he crashed, but James simply caught up to Adetokounmpo. Don't get me wrong though, the case for Giannis to win it is there. You know Giannis has an unstoppable slashing force. For the first part of the season, he seemed to have securely locked in his comfortability shooting from distance. In December, he shot an incredible 39% from three on five attempts of those shots, and it looked like the Greek had become even more freaky. Unfortunately, that shot declined by the month until it hit a whopping 18% in March. However, in February, Giannis became the only player other than Wilt Chamberlain to have 30 points, 15 rebounds, and five assists in five straight games. Also, he became the first player in NBA history to record 200 points, 100 rebounds, 50 assists in his first eight games of the season. Not to mention, he's third in league-wide rebounding and scoring. Then there's Giannis's all-time great defense, where his awareness as a paint protector, plus his agility and wingspan combination, make him a nightmare to score around. Meanwhile, LeBron's clear portrayal from my perspective that he's the most dominant in the game again makes the race razor thin. However, even though LeBron holds the invisible crown and is known as the best player in the game, the more flashy regular season for voters will likely be Giannis, so I'll predict back-to-back -back MVPs for the Greek Freak. The decision will be up to the media members, and it'll be the toughest one they've had to make in a very long time. I hope you enjoyed that list from DFlow Hoops. If you did, go ahead and hit the subscribe button so you can stay up to date on all of our future content. And to get your take featured after next video's intro, leave a comment on the Community Speaks question.